a lot of people ask me, oh, April is, this workout good for my body type, for a short body type, like Barry's boot camp, or like they'll just ask me, like, is cycling good? Is this good? So I thought it'd be really fun to review some of the workouts from popular fitness influencers online and see if they are good workout strategies for petite women. So today I picked out someone who I really enjoy watching. Her name is Natasha Ocean. I think that's how you say it. She makes a lot of fitness and nutrition and fit lifestyle content. I think it's really fun. I like her personality. I like watching her content, but that does not mean that it's always going to be the right advice for me as a petite woman. So I'm not necessarily following it. I just kind of like consuming her content. So I thought that we could review one of her workout videos today. Specifically, she has this video I found that's um, how she structures her workouts for a week and this was some time ago So it might not be what she's doing now But I thought it'd be fun to watch it together and then I can review it in live time and tell you guys What things would be good as a petite girl? What things might not be a good strategy as a petite girl, etc. And in general, she has really great advice, but you know, sometimes she's eating 3000 calories and while I've gotten my calories up to 2000, I don't think I'd ever be able to get that high while still keeping a low body fat percentage or just feeling good. I don't think I could physically eat that much food. Slight disclaimer before we begin, I just feel like I have to say this. Any type of activity is always better than none. So in no way would I ever want you guys to think that you're doing it wrong because there is no one right way to reaching your goal, to feeling good in your body, to feeling fit. I just give you guys my best tips for optimizing it from a science standpoint, but there is no best way. So I just feel like I need to say that because I don't want you guys to ever feel scared to try something new or I don't want you guys to stop doing activities that make you happy because I've said something about it not being conducive to your body type as a petite woman. For example, I talk a lot about minimizing cardio as a petite, but if you love to run, girl, run everywhere, that's fine. If you love doing certain things, this is in no way telling you to stop doing those things because at the end of the day, the goal is happiness and health. I just want you guys to keep an open mind and obviously take everything I say and apply it to you and your life and what would make you happy and not just as a black and white, this is good and this is bad because nothing in life or health or fitness or nutrition is really like that anyways. Without further ado, let's watch Natasha and see what she has to say about how she stru structures her workouts for the week. Let's hop in. Can you hop into a video? I don't know. what a week of my training looks like. A lot of you guys have been asking me. It never looks the same week to week. I have loads of stuff going on, so I kind of just do what I feel like, how much energy I have, um, and just try to fit things in depending on that. So, um, yeah. We will pause right there. <laughs> At this point in Natasha's fitness journey, she can probably afford to do that. I can almost guarantee you guys, early on when she was first getting to fitness, she probably did not do random things each week. It's really hard to build muscle if you're just doing random things each week. And I will say that even though she's doing random-ish workouts or whatever feels good each week, she's probably repeating very similar movement patterns each week because she knows what she's doing now. One of the biggest mistakes I see women make is doing really different programs and kind of skipping programs week to week or month to month and not sticking with a program for a long time. It takes time to build up muscle and then improve the metabolism, increase the metabolism. So first off the bat, I think I, I know what she's saying. She's doing what feels good, but I could see how someone who's new to fitness would interpret that as, oh, I'll just do something different each week when really you should really be sticking to a progressive program so you're able to build muscle because if you're not working your muscles, the same ones consistently, you're not going to challenge them and then you're not going to grow the muscle and then you're not going to boost your metabolism. So that's just something off the bat that I would say if your goal is to improve your metabolism and build muscle, you're going to need to stick to something week to week and it doesn't have to be the exact same workouts, but it does need to use similar movements and have a general structure or an approach that makes sense for your goal. 
So we're going to do today, well I'm going to do a calisthenics workout. So this is where I'm going to try and build my strength um, and just work on some of my um, body weight moves. I always try and do like the hardest things first and then we'll just, we'll get through the other stuff eventually. Cause if I only had a hundred fans, I'd take them all to dinner, talk about the people that we used to. Oh, that looks so hard. Oh my god. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so, they're my reverse deadlifts. I'm trying to do it with the bar in front. That's, that's my challenge, is to do them with a, with a bar in front of my legs. But I think, as you can tell, Mario is using like more and more force towards the end. Okay, so we get the idea. She is training one day of her week for calisthenics. So calisthenics is body weight strength. So you're training, doing inversions like handstands. You're you're basically using your body as the weight um, in a more extreme fashion than like Pilates or yoga. This is a, like gymnastics essentially, and I would say that for a tall body type. For any body type, this stuff is fun. I actually did some calisthenics yesterday morning. I am so sore, by the way, in my thoracic spine, my T-spine, and my neck from doing inversions and stuff. But um, it's fun, right? But uh, if you were to train this way as a lifestyle, you would end up with the body of sort of like a gymnast, which it, it's there's nothing wrong with... I mean, I the body of a gymnast is powerful, incredible, amazing, beautiful thing. Um, but not everyone wants to have... Um, the type of muscle that a petite gymnast has because it is rather, it's a lot of muscle. I mean, you get really, really strong doing gymnastic type moves. However, you're not really, because it's a lot of compound, when you're doing calisthenics, you're using a lot of muscles at once. You're using um, your core, all your stabilizers, prime movers, the big and the small muscles, you're using it all. What that results in is less targeted. You're putting the muscle on universally, like all over your body rather than in targeted areas. For example, um, if you were to go and lift in the gym with a targeted program, you could target your shoulders, for example, and you can't spot reduce fat, but you can um, kind of spot increase muscle by doing certain exercises, focusing on body parts that you want to build up. So this type of training is really fun. It's really good for your health. Is it going to give you um, muscle in strategic places to help um, with like the hourglass figure. No, it's going to put muscle on equally everywhere, which may or may not be a look you're going for. I personally would limit training calisthenics if you love it to once a day. I mean, once a day. Don't do that. <laughs> That'd be every day. Um, doing it like once in a while. If you love it, do it all the time. But if you're not looking for that type of body, obviously don't do it all the time. Um, I do it once in a while for fun to just like have fun with fitness, but I am well aware and I used to be a gymnast. So I know this, if I train like this every day, I would look very round. Like I'd be a ball of muscle and strength. And while that's really cool and I've had my athletic years being really, really muscular like that, it's just not how I want to look today. And that's my own personal like preference having like been there and yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not typically what my clients are coming to me asking for me to help them with. So keep that in mind for calisthenics. So day two, she has some functional training. This looks good so far. She's got compound movement. But there's nothing that like ties you up more than something like that. Some cleans. I did it. It's quite new for me, this move, so I didn't actually think I could do it on that way. <laughs> but I did it. If you're doing what everyone else is doing, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, I like this move. <laughs> Biometrics. <laughs> For these exercise, well, for this workout, it's a real energy banner. I just need to make sure that I, like, I always feel myself, but for these sessions especially, it needs to be. 
Yeah, so what she just said, big calorie energy burner, same thing, she's right. And what that also means is that it's um, gonna boost your metabolism. It's metabolically challenging to do total body exercises with weights like this. Um, she had some jump movements, which is plyometrics. She had like straight weight lifting um, with the cleans. She was doing a lot of different planes of motion. So this is really, really good for petite women. Um, total body workouts that are um, working specific muscles while you're doing them, but total body in the sense that um, in one exercise you're doing a couple different things. And like, for example, a compound exercise, like the clean she was doing in the beginning, that's working, multiple joints are moving. So there's multiple muscles attached to those joints moving, really gets the heart rate up, really burns calories, and it also helps you build muscle because you are training with weights. So I love this type of training. This is kind of what I would do actually myself pretty regularly. Uh, it's just more of a functional approach with weights. This is what I'm working towards. All right, so we can see now too, her goals are more um, calisthenic based right now, which would make sense because of how she's training. Last time I came to do with my camera, I actually came to do that on the ground. So this is my turn. I'm probably gonna screw it up now. Wow. Honestly, I'm gonna do that. that. How annoying am I to be? Not annoying at all. Pierce um, has been telling me the same thing for like, I don't know, eight months. Not like that. And I'm just, I'm just not doing it. <laughs> no. This is what's. Okay, so now we can see she has a day dedicated to actual gymnastics, which I hadn't watched this video yet, so. That makes a lot of sense why she'd be do, doing calisthenics early on in the week. She's working on her gymnastics. She wants to do more cool tricks and stuff, which is so fun and I totally get that. Um, this is a typical trajectory for someone who's been in fitness for many, many years and gets bored doing gym workouts. And also they've already built up a lot of muscle and lost a lot of fat and they're just like looking for other ways to stay challenged. So I get that that's where she's at in her journey. Really cool, really fun. For petite women, is it going to necessarily be the path for you? Probably not at first, unless you were a gymnast and you're trying to get back into it. And it totally depends on your goal. If your goal is to do the tricks and do a backflip and put it on Instagram, then yeah, you can train like that and totally, you can totally do that. If your goal is to lose some fat, tone up, learn the basics of weightlifting, feel confident in the gym, I would recommend a different route, one that makes sense more for your goals. And you'll see a theme emerging here. How you train should align with your goals. So you should have a strategy, you should have a plan, and it should make sense. Like hers makes sense. She's training for gymnastics, so she's doing calisthenics and um, gymnastics and other types of things that kind of transfer into this sport well. Oh, we skipped today. Hypertrophy, glutes, quads, and hamstrings. Okay, so for her day five, she's doing hypertrophy, which is a bodybuilding type of workout. Hypertrophy means the number of reps mostly are between eight and 15 reps. And this is going to allow the muscle to grow. This is totally, totally right up our alley. This is really, really good because it simulates the muscles to grow and you'll build muscle. And no, you will not build muscle in the Hulk sense. I mean, look at Natasha. She does, she trained like this for the majority to get the body she has now. She trained mostly like this um, with some athletic workouts. So it's not going to be like literally like, oh, you do this rep range and then your muscles start to blow up. Not, not at all. It's not gonna go down like that, I can assure you. Um, so this is actually a really good technique or approach. I do hypertrophy for probably almost all my workouts except for the fun ones. I mean, it's fun though, I love it. It's just very predictable after a certain point if you've been doing it for many, many years. Uh, but it's what gets the job done. It's what helps you lose fat. It's, what's help you, it's what helps you get the shape look um, strong and um, curvy and fit. That's what you need is 
muscle. When we watch fitness influencers, we often think that we need to copy their workout routine because if they're doing that and they look like that, then they we must follow what they're doing and we'll get the same result, right? That's the thought process and it's very easy to fall into this thought process. However, the thing that people are not realizing and this is why it's really important to consider this is that what they are currently doing now, whatever a fitness expert is doing today is not what they did to get the body they have today. Typically, our routines change throughout the years. Whatever they did when they first started to get the body they have now is gonna look different than what they're doing now. So the moral of the story here is you don't need to go from point A to Z, you need to go from A to B. You're still gonna get amazing results. You'll get even better results going on your own journey, on your own path, because it's going to instill lifestyle in you, it's going to give you lots of room for growth and you won't be trying to go, you won't get frustrated trying to do something extreme in the first month of your life, your new lifestyle. So really you don't need to do some like crazy six days a week training, hypertrophy, lifting all this weight. You just need to start where you're at, pick up some weights and then slowly use progressive overload, meaning increase your weights over time and see where the journey takes you, follow a structured program. So. It's really important, I think, to recognize that yes, they are here, but everything in life happens a few months later. When we make a decision today, we either reap the rewards or suffer from the consequences a few months later. It's like a trickle down effect. So when you look at fitness routines and, and everything, how her body looks today is not a reflection of the workout she did today. It's a reflection of a lifestyle she had a few months ago, even years ago, and what she consistently did during that time period, okay? Um, so that's really, really, really key to think about. And also to just lighten up on yourself and remember that everyone is on a different path on Instagram or wherever in life, they're on a different journey and you're on your own as well. So um, that's okay. And you just gotta go to the next point for you and not the next point for somebody else. The other thing I'll mention is she broke um, she broke this hypertrophy workout down into lower body only. For petite women, I would recommend starting with like a hypertrophy workout that's total body. So doing your whole body, upper body and lower body. Once you've gotten more into lifestyle, you can split into more complicated training um, regimens such as um, upper body days and lower body days. That's what I do now. I have two upper body and two lower body days. Of course, this is not what I did when I first started. I did years of total body workouts and uh, it will really get you results. It will help you burn fat, get your metabolism up, build muscle, and then you can continue to progress onto something more um, advanced. Okay, so I think that was everything. I, she worked out, I think, five days in that video. I kind of skipped through it, so I'm not sure. I think that that's a good number of days to work out. Of course, it's on the more frequent side of things, and you don't need to start there. You can start with literally one day is better than nothing start with three days a week you can see results with four I am training right now four days a week and it feels really good on my body recovery and sleep is really really important for fat loss getting your cortisol those stress hormone levels down and if you're constantly working out you're going to have high levels of cortisol and it's gonna be really hard to lose stubborn fat so I like that she has that kind of balanced approach um, and overall I love that she has like a fun approach to fitness she's doing what she wants for her She's trying to do cool gymnastic stuff. That's awesome. Um, in terms of for petite women, I would focus most on the total body hypertrophy, building muscle workouts. That's gonna get you where you wanna go, most likely losing fat, getting the metabolism up through building muscle. So you guys, I hope this was helpful. If there's any fitness influencers that you want me to review, drop that note in the comments. Let me know whose videos or I can even do what I eat in a day reviews since I'm also a nutritionist. Let me know. I think this could be kind of fun and finally we can look through content through um, the lens of what's good for us as petite women. And if you like this, please give it a like and subscribe for more content and I'll see you guys next Monday. As always, have a great day. Bye.